Hello guys, so uh, I've got this box from B and H here today, and I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna show you guys basically what I got. So I I, I'm, I, well, I think I know what's inside it because I ordered it. <laughs> uh, you guys don't know what's what's inside it, so it's gonna be a little bit of a surprise, and uh, it should be unless there was a mistake made uh, in shipping, should be in my new camera kit. Uh, so I'll show it to you guys. So let me just open it up and. Uh, here, if you guys have any questions, I'm doing this all by myself pretty much, so uh, I, I can see the comments up here, so let me know. Always exciting to get new camera gear, and and I'm actually excited for this new kit. You can never have enough cameras, right? <laughs> Alright, let's open this up. Let me know where you guys are joining, and actually, maybe you can let me know, uh, since we're doing this live, what do you think I got here? Uh, I can see some comments here. Uh, <laughs> that's the GH5. Uh, maybe, maybe. Is that, is that what you guys want to wanna get? Uh, I see greetings from Germany, Romania. Who else we got there? And I see some of you, are, some of you guys are saying you're excited. Uh, I don't know if you're as excited as me. I always get excited. It doesn't matter how many cameras you already have or you've tested or used. It's always fun to get new gear. Anyways, uh, it's GH5, I see. It looks like right now GH5 is winning. Uh, who else says XT2? Somebody else says Sony A6500. GH6? I wish. <laughs> I wish I had GH6. Not yet. That I can tell you. It's not a GH6. Eva 1. Oh, Canon C200. Ari Alexa 65. Maybe, maybe. Does it fit in this box? <laughs> and does, does B&H even carry it? A8. Uh, what is this? I see Sony A9, A7S. I see a lot of people are saying the new Panasonic Eva. Either that or C200. Seems like it's, it's winning. So between these two cameras. Well, anyways, without further ado, let me open it up and show you guys. Oh. Watch the microphone there. On the packing foam. So here it is. Ta da! <laughs> the big unveil. It's not the latest. Well, it's fairly new, I would say. It's the Sony A6500. Uh, and why did I get it? You, you might be wondering. Maybe maybe you guys can let me know. Why would you get this camera versus all the other options that we have right now? Uh, and, as, and if you know already some of the other cameras that I have, why would I get it? Uh, well, there's a multiple multiple reasons why I got it. I'm kind of, I was kind of curious actually to try it out on some some bigger projects because so far I've only had a chance to play with this camera like at the trade shows and things like that. So I haven't really had it like out in the field and using this. So I really wanted to use it, uh, and I'm, I'm kind of just curious with it because I loved the the 60 uh, A6300. That one I thought was a, was a great camera. So anyway, so this one. Uh, as you can see, it's a uh, you know it's a much smaller box, and I got some other things that I'll show you guys. I got some lenses and and things like that. But let's kind of quickly open it up. Let's see what uh, what we get here. It's usually the useless manuals. Whoever reads these, right? <laughs> At least I don't. The battery. This I'll probably have to get extra because I don't have I don't have that many of those small Sony batteries. And then yeah, you get the charger, the the shoulder strap, eyepiece. Actually, I'll put that under before I lose it. And yeah, this I think I don't need. So there it is, it's tiny. <laughs> I know, it's like this big box, but that's because you know I got some of the other things, but even the box that, that they ship it in, it's uh, yeah, it's, it's not, uh, it's, it's way too big for this thing, I would say. But anyways, let me put on the eyepiece. And there we have it. And let me pair it up with one of the lenses. So I got different lenses here. And it's a 16 to 50. And this is the kit lens, I believe. That's the one, yeah. F3.5 to 5.6. So nothing really that special about that lens. I mean, it's it's a decent lens, right? But it's... Uh, oh, this is actually a kit uh, that I got because B&H right now has a kit where you, if you buy this camera, they'll give you the kit lens, but they also give you uh, some extras, like an, another battery. So that's actually really good because, like I said, I don't have many of these. Plus, what's there? Oh, 
an extreme 64 gigabyte uh, SD card, which you're gonna need if you wanna record the 4K in this camera. Uh, you need the faster uh, card. I also got this lens, which is the, uh, again, it's not the fastest, not the GG type lenses, it's only APS-C size, uh, so it's not gonna work with the full frame. At least, at least I believe that's what it is. Uh, but it's the basically 55 to 210 millimeter, which is a really sweet, I think, range. So again, that's what I'm gonna use with this camera. Plus, I got, this is an extra, this doesn't come with the kit. This is kind of like, these things is what you get in the kit if you order the camera right now from B&H. Uh, but I also got this lens from Sony this is the 50 millimeter, you know, nifty 50, whatever people like to call it. And it's the F 1.8 uh, OSS. So, you know, I got this because I actually want to be able to get like some of those really nice shallow depth of field kind of shots. Um, so that's the thing. And then and I got some other stuff I'll show you guys in a second. So let me actually throw on maybe one the kit lens even. See how that works with it. I believe it's the same kit lens as the A6300 came in. Which I actually liked. It's, it, what I loved about it was that it's uh, it's like really really light and really small. And yep, it looks like it's the same one. Put this back here, and let's throw the lens on there. Nice and small, put the battery in here. So let me see what you guys are saying in terms of why I got it or why why would you get it if you got this camera versus the other ones. I see some people are saying that it's Sony all the way. Well I, I don't think Sony all, <laughs> I don't think Sony is the, the ultimate winner here, but there's a, there's a lot of manufacturers right now and and uh, I think they all have great things to offer. Uh, somebody says speed boost that puppy, which I might actually do. I mean, APS-C size is nice, but I, I'll tell you, I might just get the speed booster just for photography, because then to get that even you know, nicer kind of full frame look for photography, I think it, it makes a difference. But anyways, turn that on for the first time here. If the battery is, has any juice in there, I don't even know if it does. Uh, maybe not. <laughs> But anyways, I'll tell you guys why I got it. So I got it, I guess it's for very various reasons, want to try the camera, but the main reason is because of the autofocus. <laughs> if you can believe it, I've, you know, I, I don't use autofocus when I'm doing like the, the, you know, the actual work that I do, like the professional, like, you know, film shoots or music videos, that kind of stuff. But I got this because I want to be doing more of uh, these videos that you guys are watching right now, live stream and everything. Uh, and I want to be able to, uh, you know, or even even if I'm just doing like gear reviews, but I don't have anybody here helping me, then I want to have another camera where I can just put it, let's say, off to the side or even above the table or something and get uh, shots where I know I'm always going to get focused or at least nice focused shots of uh, like the close up of the products that I'm doing uh, just to showcase you guys. So this way, like I said, is uh, I could have hired a camera operator to stand there and behind the camera and, and focus for me in real time. Or, from what I've seen so far, this camera has a pretty sweet uh, AF. So, um, like I said, that's, it should be good. Now, if it's not, then I'm going to return the camera. But if it, if it works just as well as I've, I've seen it working, and also just like seeing some of the videos people do online, then I think this is going to be a great addition. And I might even just use this lens or the, the zoom lens uh, for majority of that, that, those shots. So, I think it's going to be pretty cool. Um, but yeah, that's the main reason, if you guys can believe it. <laughs> AF, that's what it came down to. The, I, it was kind of like, I was hoping that the GH5 would have that because the GH5 is an all around amazing camera, that, like slow motion, 180 frames per second, all those things that it has. Uh, but, you know, 10 bit, all, you know, many, many actually features like just when you're using, and I'm actually doing right now a, a full kind of review of the GH5. And I still think it's an amazing camera if, if, and I'm just saying, just if you don't need to rely on autofocus. Uh, and that's why I'm saying is like for GH5, if you're using it for majority of work that, you know, that like the kind of work that I'm doing, narrative kind of film shoots, music videos, then it's a great camera. 
But if you need something like this, where you just basically cannot have an, uh, cannot afford to have another operator, you just want to throw it up on a tripod and just have it there, and you want to make sure that you're getting the shots in focus, then then I think you have to go with something like the, this camera, or like the Canon now has you know some really nice cameras, but and not in the price range. To get something from Canon that delivers 4K, that delivers good AF, you know, and it's affordable, it's it really pretty much doesn't exist. <laughs> they have some good 1080p cameras with amazing autofocus, or they have the 4K cameras like the, even the C200, but they're going to cost you, you know, in several thousands of dollars. Whereas this, uh, you can get the camera for like 1,200 bucks, I think, right now, and or I got this whole kit for 1,600 dollars uh, B and H. So it's a nice deal. And anyways, so that's that's the reason why I got it. AF. Let me know what you guys think. Oh, how bad is the overheating issue with this, the A6500? I don't know, because I haven't really used it, I think. The 6300 was, was I'm not going to say bad, but it, well, yeah, there was problems. <laughs> I shot music videos with it in, in uh, South America and in the heat, and uh, we had many breaks that we had to take uh, because the camera overheated. Uh... Yeah, I see some people saying AF scares me. And I'll tell you, I, I also, I would never ever, I don't want you guys to think I'm going to be suddenly shooting films and just, you know, turn on the AF and be like, eh, don't worry about it, just leave the camera. No, that's not what I'm doing. I still think if you want to get really good, you know, focus in your shots, it's not about just getting the, sh the, the right things in, in focus. It's about getting uh, the right, uh, basically the, the right speed or sometimes within the shot like selectively you know going from one object to another and I think so far that is something that only a human being can do so for creative kind of work that's what I'm going to be doing but again for stuff where I just need to uh, quickly you know get AF while I'm just have this camera up on a tripod I think that's where it's going to be great but I'll get back to you on that I'm going to do definitely a review on this camera too um I see some people are saying the autofocus on this camera blows out any other camera. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I think Canon is pretty good too with their dual pixel. Um, see somebody else is saying Bart Johnson Productions. Uh, I'll be doing a live stream also when my FS5 gets here today. Oh, congrats, Bart. It's a really nice camera. Uh, there's this one here. Oh, somebody ordered the Fujion uh, MK50 135mm lens. It's a very nice lens and for like bigger cinema cameras or, you know, like the FS7 he's saying he's, he's using it for. I think it's nice, but it is an expensive lens. What is it now, like $3,000? So, uh, again, I wanted something a, a budget. Anyways, let me show you guys what else I got here. Maybe I got another camera. Or not. <laughs> Maybe let's kind of go through quickly what I got. I got, oh, here. I got another lens, and this one's uh, Lumix, and it's the 25mm f1.7. And this is going to be a nice lens, actually for, mainly probably for my brother is going to be using this, but I'll also probably use it with the, the GH5, GH4, my brother's using it with the G85 for a lot of the stuff that he's doing. Uh, and it's, uh, you know, if you want to get really nice shallow depth of field, on the micro four thirds, you can definitely do it. There's actually, uh, you're gonna see in, in my review of the GH5, I was I shot this whole scene with the, the Lumix Vario lenses, micro four thirds lenses, and I was able to get some pretty nice looking, like shallow, very creamy kind of depth of field that you know, makes it look very cinematic. And it's all a matter of, a big part of it is how you're framing with focal lengths you use. But also this can help, right? F1.7, because so far the fastest Lumix Vario lens I have, like the Micro Four Thirds lens, is uh, F2.8. That was the fastest. So it's kind of a nice addition to actually have this uh, this lens. And I'm curious myself actually to see how big it is because the box feels very light. So let's see. Now, why did we go with 25? It's uh, I guess you'd have to ask my brother, but he was basically saying he wants something more like an equivalent of like a 50 millimeter on a full frame camera. So that's what 25 on a micro four thirds is gonna give you. Yeah, this is super light. It's like probably the slightest lens I've ever held. It's it's plasticky. It doesn't feel as nice and solid as the, the actually the Lumix Vario lenses that I've been using, the f 2.8s. But um, but it's still well built, and it's that's the cool thing about micro four thirds is that you you know you can still get fast lenses like this. 
but overall your your lenses are going to be so much smaller and lighter like this is you know like i said 25 mil and it's very fast it's a nice prime lens and it's uh and it's very light like you pretty much don't feel it don't feel any weight in there so yeah and it comes with the the shade so i'll put that back in the box and i'm gonna let my brother play around, play around with this lens and maybe do a review for you guys if you're interested let me know uh also got this bag here and that's actually all that's actually i missed something when you get that kit from uh, the from b and h with the sony a6500 this is actually on one of the other things that you get with the kit so you get the 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 two lenses the wider and the zoom lens the extra battery extra card and you get this bag from ragard and i've actually uh, so far bought a few of their bags uh like the big one if you guys watched my last actual unboxing video uh like the big for, for ursa they're really nice durable bags so far i got a great great experience and this one's like a like a little satchel type kind of a like it's a man purse whatever you want to call it style that is going to be actually good for the a6500 so like if i don't want to carry a big bag i can fit that camera and if i can probably even fit in the zoom lens in here so i think it should be good and then just put the extra battery and the and the card in there so yeah nice i got one more package that i got to and to be honest this one is going to be both surprising for you and for me because I, I don't even know what's in it, to be honest. Like, I've sometimes what happens is like I'm busy, I'm working, but like companies contact me, hey, can we send you a product, this and that. Uh, also, I order things, and so it might just be something that has nothing to do with cameras. It might be something for my house because I you know, recently moved to a new place. So maybe that's what it is, but I'm guessing by the weight of it, it's actually something. Uh, I'm guessing it's a camera accessory or lens or something. And it's a, I, like I said, I buy a lot of things, uh, and sometimes it just takes, you know, like some of the stuff, especially like coming in from China, takes forever to ship. So I don't even know what it is, to be honest. But let's see. Now, while I'm opening this thing, maybe you guys can let me know what is the camera you're looking for, most forward to. Uh, I guess to, to looking to maybe to possibly. Like your dream camera um but don't don't go crazy with the budget like something that's affordable i would say under under eight thousand dollars at least uh let me know what what's like the camera that you guys are most excited about and that you'd love to get or maybe you're even getting like it's um, bart johnson productions getting his fs5 today i'm guessing today oh, oh come on <laughs> need to get a proper thing too Opening these boxes, man, they really packed it up. All right, what's in here? <laughs> A lot of newspapers, that's what's here. Uh, throw this out here. To be honest, I really have no idea what this is. Oh, now I know. Oh, man, I was waiting for this, actually. Oh. That's why it's so heavy. It's old school. Now we're going really old school. <laughs> it's the Kodak Scope H33. You guys can see. <laughs> wow, this is actually. I, I found this on eBay. I'm always like on eBay scouting things. Sometimes it's like an addiction. I'm just looking for stuff that's, you know, maybe a little useless. But I see the box is cracked. I don't think it was supposed to be cracked, but I can probably glue it. It's literally like an old. Like the camera, I guess, came in these boxes, and uh, or is it actually wait? Is it the camera or is it the? Yeah, I believe it's like the, the old, old eight millimeter camera. Because I ordered a bunch of things. Oh no, it's a projector. It's the. This is actually a sixteen millimeter projector. <laughs> and I love to collect like old, old things like this. Put this out here. It has the empty spool, so you can put the, the film as you wound up, and uh, wow, this is really, really old school. <laughs> and it's supposedly in good working order, so I'll test it out and can let you guys know, but it has the extra spool. Uh, and uh, and actually, got, uh, I ordered actually uh, another, like this I ordered a while back, so... Kind of curious to see 
how it's gonna work and perform. I I just you know even if it doesn't didn't work, I just love old kind of camera accessories and gear and things like that. And, you know, I'm a kind of a I am kind of a gear gear junkie, but this is more for like almost historical value. This is from the 50s, 50s or late 40s. So uh, it's you know it's got a nice little lens here from the projector and. Yeah, I think it's going to be pretty cool. Actually, let me see if this thing even works. Let me plug it in. Hopefully, I don't blow a fuse or something. I'm curious because I did order one. I remember I did order one uh, projector that I was at set that I had with a working lamp and everything. So I'm curious to see actually if this one's going to work. So where we have the lamp. And this is off. And I'm guessing that one's the... Let's see. Ah, oh, that works. The lamp. I don't see the lamp turning on. Maybe is it the bulb that's burnt out? Oh! We got everything. <laughs> so you can turn on and off the lamp, and then you have the motor here. And if you wish you guys could be here to actually like just the smell of it it's that you know kind of like that antique store smell kind of musky and thing but in a camera gear it's actually kind of fun you you know that this there's some history behind this and god knows who's been using this but yeah it's a really nice projector that said from the 19 late 1940s and the fact that it's still operational i i'm actually excited and can't wait to to try this out so it's actually eight millimeters sorry uh it wasn't it's not 16 millimeter i did all get another projector that's 16 mil but I, I ordered um, two cameras, and I have actually one old camera that's uh, eight millimeter, and I kind of want to do a little bit of a challenge. I'll tell you guys, give you a little sneak peek of uh, shooting something with eight millimeter film, uh, just just for the hell of it. And and I think we. Uh, a bunch of cool videos that I can do and show you guys what you can do with it and then take the 8 millimeter and merge it with the new technology that we have and uh, anyways you will have to stay tuned to see see what I mean by that but yeah this is pretty cool and you can find these things like you know like this projector for example or old you know film cameras pretty cheap this one I got is like $55 uh, there's a camera that I got 8 millimeter camera that I'm still waiting I don't know when it's gonna get here uh, but it, it's an 8mm camera, mint working condition from the 19, uh, 1930s, I believe it was, from the ones, 1934. And it's, uh, like I said, mint condition, so it's supposed to be. Uh, and I got it for $19, if you can believe it. Plus shipping, it was, I think, like $7. So you can find these things, because there's so many people out there who, you know, like, uh, find things in their, I don't know, grandparents, you know, attic or something. They don't know what to do with these, with these things, and they sell it on eBay, and... And yeah, you, you, you'd be you'd be surprised. You can find some really nice stuff like this uh, online. So uh, yeah, so that's the, that's the, another really kind of fun thing. Uh, so let's see here what we got before I finish up. Uh, let's see, you get the Sigma. More. See, see, you guys are having good conversation up here. So question from Bart, do you have any films to play on it? No, I actually have a lot of 18, uh, 16 millimeter film uh, that I've shot, but I uh, don't have any 8 millimeter actually, to be honest. Oh, somebody here says, Lee Young, we had one just like it when I was a kid. Wow, that's so cool. So, you know, if you can find it again. Just, there's a bunch of these you can find online and get it and kind of, you know, just, just for the old time sake, kind of relive the memories. Somebody's asking, what cameras are you shooting with now? Uh, well, right now, like this live stream, I have actually the GH5, which is uh, the close-up here, which I believe, uh, is it? Uh, well, yeah. anyways, the, the camera that you're seeing me through right now, that's actually the Ursa. And now maybe we'll cut to the GH5. And yeah, that's the, the GH5 over there. So those are the two cameras I'm using in here. And I would say like the, the Ursa is, you know, there's the Ursa Mini 4.6K. That's like the workhorse camera uh, for me. I, I do all of the like live streaming. I do uh, most of the stuff I do here in the studio where I'm kind of like reviewing gear, unboxing, all the stuff, tutorials. I usually do it with that. Now, uh, I also, uh, when I'm on the field, I'll try to use it, but I don't always take it with me because it is a bigger, heavier camera. So 
It just requires more support gear and bigger tripods, bigger everything to carry. So that's when I'll switch usually to my GH4. I kind of have my GH4 configured in a nice cage and, uh, and just in my backpack with the lenses ready to go. So I can always pick up my bag and I know everything's there and I can go shooting with it. Uh, now the GH5 is actually a loner. I'm going to have to return it, unfortunately, and I'm still debating should I get it, should I not get it. There's a lot of amazing features on that camera, but for me, it's just sort of because I have the GH4 and I have you know some of the other Micro Four Thirds cameras. It's just it do doesn't give me enough of an incentive to upgrade uh, to that camera because, and that's why I would say is if you tighten the budget and let's say you already have GH4, I don't know if there's a reason for you to upgrade to GH5. So that's the reason why. Uh, but uh, but uh, yeah, those are like the main cameras right now that I'm using. I see here who else is this? We have somebody says what is it? DSLR video shooter saying that they shot eight millimeter camera. I'd be actually curious to see like if anybody, because I'm I'm wondering myself if I shoot eight millimeter because I found some film stock. It's supposedly still you know it's it, it's past expiry date, but it should be should be able to work in good uh, good exposure uh, because film the actual film chemicals they do expire after a certain number of years. But I'm just wondering where I can actually go and uh, expose that film and like to get it. I mean, get it developed afterwards. So that's kind of what I'm wondering about. Let's see. Somebody saying Sony A7S2 versus Sony A7S. I mean, yeah, I'll tell you the first generation of the Sony A7S is pretty nice deal now because you can get it for really very cheap amazing low light i mean just the image quality is beautiful it has s lock too and if you pair that with uh, the external recorders which are really uh, you know affordable right now then you get yourself a really uh, amazing 4k camera uh, i would say then there's almost no reason to upgrade to the a7 s2 unless you really care about the in-body image stabilization but for a lot of work i mean i, I don't use in-body image stabilization so <laughs> Somebody's saying, I just can't wait for the A6500 successor. It's better touch screen, f f flip screen. I hope, because, yeah, that's the thing about this camera is that it's... I I'll tell you guys that I almost think that if they... If Sony had... I don't know why they keep on sticking to the stupid back kind of LCD. It's just so weird. Like, basically, you have to be always behind here to kind of to see what's happening. Because you're going to be up here, or even if you put it up above you, and then you're kind of looking from below. But it's not, it's not great, and... You know, it's just annoying. I don't know why. It's almost like, I don't know, they spent like a million dollars designing the stupid hinge. And now they're like, we sunk so much money into this hinge. We don't want to change it. Like, that's what it just seems like. Because everybody's been telling them, ditch that thing. Just do whatever pretty much every other camera manufacturer does. Where they have a hinge here on this side and just allows you to flip it. You can then uh, point it, you know, in the other direction. Which would be then great if you're doing, you know, like here, this kind of shots, right? Um, so this way, if you, if you want to get like, if they did that screen and they had that screen basically where you could flip it and see yourself or, or even if they had just did it where it flips up, then then I think it would be a killer camera. This camera would be probably selling like, you know, like hotcakes or cutcakes or whatever it is the term is, because it has a lot of the amazing features as, you know, good AF, has nice, you know, uh, uh, dynamic range has you know really good just 4k quality like footage all that stuff and then this could be used for both filmmaking but also for all these filmmakers who are also filmmakers slash vloggers because with this little package and it's a very light camera too they could flip up the screen get nice shots of themselves get it in focus uh you know and then if they need to throw on a nice cinema lens or something like that then they can do that and they can basically cut to you know basically get some nice sh sh you know, shots that way so that's why i would say that um it's it's the, it almost seems like Sony missed the mark. Now I, you know, I'm not gonna be waiting around to see to see if the next generation they'll actually fix this damn screen problem. Um, because like I said, I, I needed a camera right now that had good AF, and this seemed like the most affordable version. So that's the reason why I got it. So, but yeah, I do agree that that screen is uh, is one thing that's that's not good. 
Let's see somebody's debating between getting a 50 no 6300 or 6500 if you're yeah if you're debating i'll tell you that the image quality from what i've seen so far is there's pretty much no difference 6500 and 6300 both amazing image quality so i'm not saying they're bad it's just it's there's almost no difference in there uh where you do get the difference is just you get the the little bit of extra features like the image stabilization which again how often are you going to use it when you're doing you know actual like film work and or music videos i don't know if you're doing for example wedding videos yeah probably come in handy because you have to or even documentaries you got to be on on the run a lot of times and um, you know, and supposedly you can get pretty smooth shots with this, with the built-in body stabilization. Also, the the other big advantage of this one versus the 6300 is the touchscreen. Well, I say big if you care about the AF. Uh, the A6300 also has good AF, but now you can use it basically where it's it's touchscreen, so you can just touch part of the image and we'll focus there. So it just makes it even faster, you know, quicker to work with. So could be good for like a wedding video like i said if you're doing wedding videos and you quickly see i'd say the bride you know touch on her face we'll focus there then you touch let's say on somebody else there and you want to focus on and you can rock focus you could say that way very fast um so it could be an advantage there which like i said with 6300 you can still out of focus but you're just selecting the points is, is not a fast um but yeah that's the i would say that's the biggest advantage but otherwise i don't know if there's a reason to think because you can get really nice deals now on the A6300. So, all right, let's see here. Somebody's saying my second shooter's A6500 overheated all day on a wedding shoot this last Saturday. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> Yeah, maybe that's the whole thing with with just in general the smaller Sony cameras like this one, a six thousand, a sixty three hundred. There, I guess they try to pack so much into the small body that these cameras do overheat. So for me, it's not a problem because most of the time I'll just you know use it for like a quick shot here and there. Uh, and if, if I'm going to be using it here in the studio, like I said, on a tripod for you know out of focus, I'll usually be able to just you know have like turn on the AC so it's cooler here. And I also, if you do flip out the screen, it kind of helps dissipate the body a little bit. I mean, the, the heat away from the body. So you want to have the screen kind of away from there. Um, so that, I, I would say, but but especially if I'm, for example, going to use this on a film or music video shoot, then all I'm going to do is like five, ten minute shots. Unless you're shooting like out in really, really bright, you know, bright sunlight and, and just, you know, heat. Then yes, it's probably not going to be good. Or if you're just using it for like live events, like for example weddings, where you need the camera to run sometimes for one or two hours, and in that case, it's uh, you know first of all it has a 30 minute re record limit, so that that kind of sucks. But also, it's going to overheat. Like this thing when, when I was shooting in South America, a music video on the A6300, over there it was just overheating even sometimes in the middle of like a two minute long take because uh, because it was just super freaking hot. It was like uh is it 40 like of yeah 40 degrees almost some days with the you know the humid humidity and everything uh which is like over 100 degrees fahrenheit so so that's when uh, when do you these cameras you want to be kind of careful but anyways uh we could talk about cameras all day i know i could it's always fun anyways i've got, got this thing which i'm really excited about and it works look at least looks like it works i'll be getting some other eight millimeter cameras i'm also on a hunt always for other cool gear so Stay tuned for that, and as always, if you want to stay up to date, uh, go to my website, tomantusfilms.com. Uh, you know, while you're there, subscribe to my newsletter so you guys stay notified when I do this kind of stuff. Uh, when I do, for example, like my last unboxing, I did uh, basically the you know showed some of the cool sliders I got. I got to review them and test them out, but I've got way too many sliders, so I'm going to be giving away for sure a slider or maybe two. So, you know, for all that stuff, new tutorials, new things, you want to stay up to date, again, tomatosfilms.com and subscribe to the newsletter over there. Uh, and I'll see you guys next time, I guess. So anyways, bye.